Hey Beasties and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Candy and on this channel we like to talk about all things dolls, toys, and action figure related. And today we will be continuing our Universal Monsters Jada Toy Saga with The Bride of Frankenstein. Now, just like the other two figures that we've already taken a look at, her box is exactly the same. It's a standard window box, which you can see here in the front. It has the logo for The Bride of Frankenstein on the bottom. And then the Universal Monsters logo is adorned all over the top of the box and on the bottom. Now on this side you can see the main difference is that there is an artwork of her on the side instead of one of the other monsters. There's her logo on the bottom again. Very nice artwork. Then we can see all four that are available on the back. They're actually, let's see, they added two new ones this year. They added the Invisible Man and the Wolf Man, so that's a total of six now that are currently available, and I believe there's a special edition of Dracula available as well that is not shown here. Then if we move on to the other side, it's that artwork of the other monsters. There's Frankie on top, her down here, and the creature from the Black Lagoon, which will be our next weekend's video. The last weekend of October. Can you believe it's already almost over? But anyway, with that out of the way, let me go ahead and get her out of the box, and then we can take a closer look at her. Alright, so I am back and she is out of the box now, just like all the other Universal Monsters toys that we've taken a look at from Jada Toys. She does come with two accessories, one interchangeable head sculpt, and then one set of interchangeable hands. So let's go ahead and take a look at those first. As you can see, she has these very petite hands. Uh, they're covered in bandages. You can see there's very little paint detailing on there, but that's fine. They're both very intricate little hand sculpts. This one has more bandages coming off of the top of it that have been wrapped around. So there are those. And as you can see, I have displayed her with her additional accessories. I'm gonna use the word accessories loosely again because just like with Frankenstein, I don't kill these count as two, but instead one because they are the same item just duplicated. Um, so she comes with these two restraining posts. You can see they have chains hanging off of them and what look like, let me pull that closer here, little bits of beige ribbon. Um, they both have these bases that are textured. A fun fact about these, uh, she actually is never restrained with these in the movie. It's actually Frankenstein during the earlier half of the film. Um, the Bride actually plays very little of a role in the movie, even though it's titled The Bride of Frankenstein. She only shows up towards the end, and these are just never used on her. So it's more like Frankenstein got another set of accessories to go with his bride than she actually got her own. So now that we've taken a look at both of those, we're going to go ahead and take a look at her secondary head sculpt. Alright, so as you can see, her secondary head sculpt is a screaming sculpt. Let me pull her closer so that we can look at it in a little bit more detail. So mine does have paint defects. I'm just kind of noticing that's a trend with the Jada Toys figures. I don't know if anybody else has that experience with them. Let me know in the comments if you have. But as you can see, there's also that pixelation because they are printed on. But I'm not noticing anything really off with her mouth or with her eyes. So that's nice. See, she has her white streaks. Overall, it looks pretty good, aside from the scuff here, and then these little bits of... I'm not sure if that's scuff paint or scratches. There's also something on her cheek here that I'm not quite sure what that is. But there is her second head sculpt. Let me go ahead and get her back with her first one so we can take a look at that and her as a figure all together. Alright, so here she is back with her original head sculpt. As you can see, it's just a very serious looking face some uh, slight chips there as well unfortunately but overall it doesn't look too bad um, her eyes are slightly misplaced I've noticed kind of similar to what I experienced with Dracula if any of you have watched that review but there's that head sculpt and then if we move down um, she is wearing this white gown to me this looks like a burial shroud I'm not sure if they ever explain what it actually is I tried to find out last night but I couldn't find any good details so for me this is just a burial shroud. It could have been just the cloth that they used to cover her when she was on the operating table. But as you can see in the back, it does Velcro. And then whenever you remove it, you do get her in all of her bandage glory. As you can see, they went all out. She is fully bandaged. There's not a spot where they missed. 
I do like how they continue the paint throughout. It's very nice looking. It's also very nicely textured, very similar to Frankenstein's textured pants. I really enjoy whenever there are nice textures on figures, just to kind of feel, and you can also see it on camera, it looks very nice. So now that we've taken a look at her a little bit closer, let's go ahead and take a look at her articulation. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be standard that we've seen with the other figures, but she may have more mobility due to the fact that she has less going on, obviously clothing-wise, to cause any friction. You can see she does have movement at the neck. It's up and down. And then her shoulders are mobile. There's a swivel joint up here. There's only a singular joint at the elbow. So that is slightly different. The other figures did have a double joint. But that doesn't really limit her mobility all that much. Then obviously she can move at the wrist. I think there might be something on the underside that might be a paint defect on mine. And then there is movement at the chest. The hips. There's another swivel up here. And there is a double joint at her knee. And then she does have a swivel ankle. Hers are much more flexible, I've noticed, than the others right out of the box. I actually had trouble getting her to stand because of these. But that is all of her range of motion. Let me go ahead and get her back together and then we can finish out this review. All right, and that has been my review of the Jada Toys Universal Monsters Bride of Frankenstein figure. If you guys do like these videos and you want to see more of the channel, feel free to go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to get notified of all my latest uploads, go ahead and click the bell icon. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be posted next weekend. This one was posted a little bit late. But the next video will be posted next Saturday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I will see you guys all then. Bye!